Welcome back everybody, my name is Tucker and today's video is an NBA Trade Machine episode, this time on Bradley Beal. Now if you don't know how this works, this is a series in which I get suggestions from you guys on possible trades for some of the biggest names around the NBA and then I throw in some of mine as well that I come up with. The best way to try and get involved in this series is to follow me on Twitter and be on the lookout for when I ask for trades for these videos or comment them in the comment section down below. So with all that said, let's go ahead and get started. First up, we have Natze. He says, Mo Bamba, a 2020 unprotected first, Evan Fournier, and some seconds as well, or whatever you need to do to match the salaries. And the reason that this is in the video is because I think this is heading in the right direction of how the Orlando Magic could potentially make this deal work, even if it's not all the way there. Mo Bamba certainly has value to the Wizards. The 2020 Unprotected First does as well. Fournier is really just kind of an expiring at this point. I highly doubt he would be part of the Wizards' long-term plans, but there's two issues with this for me. One, I don't really think this is enough for the Wizards to truly bite because I don't know how excited people are about the long-term prospect of Mo Bamba until he actually shows some tangible stuff on the court, at least not just basically in a one-for-one -one exchange for Bradley Beal plus a pick, so maybe Aaron Gordon would have to be involved here. Uh, I don't really think the Magic would consider putting Jonathan Isaac in the deal, so maybe it's just not a situation that's going to work out where they would be able to go after Bradley Beal if this is what they'd be willing to offer. And on the other hand, I also don't really understand why the Magic would do this. Obviously, they had a good season last year, made the playoffs as a seventh seed, uh, and they're kind of not necessarily stuck in the middle, but they're definitely searching for some more upside, and Bradley Beal could provide them the star power to do that. But it's also not guaranteed that he's going to re-sign with them in two years, and they'd have to give up a significant amount of value in order to make this deal happen. And that's going to be the case, obviously, for every team that trades for Bradley Beal. They want to be certain that he would be able to re-sign or he would want to re-sign with them in two years. And I'm just not really sure that the Magic are in a position to be able to say that, yes, he would stay after the situation that he's gone through over the last year and a half or so in Washington. So those are really my issues. They'd have to up their compensation, and then I just don't really know if the Magic would be all that willing to do this. But it's still an interesting idea and an interesting suggestion. Next up now is Joey. He said the Nuggets need to consolidate some of their talent, and this would be a good mutual trade. And the deal is Gary Harris, Will Barton, and Monty Morris in exchange for Bradley Beal going to the Nuggets. And this is a little bit of a similar situation as Orlando from a compensation standpoint because the Will Barton contract is probably not going to end up being a good one. He has been a good player in the past and struggled with injuries last year. He could always turn that around, but I'm not necessarily viewing him as an asset at this point in time uh, with the contract that he's on. And then Monty Morris is a good young player, but he's more so just going to be a solid backup point guard for the rest of his career at this point, in my opinion. So basically, it's a one-for-one -one swap with Gary Harris and Bradley Beal, and Harris's value isn't as high as maybe it would have been this time last year because he struggled with injuries that didn't have his best season last year. So I think there's going to need to be more compensation involved for Denver to be able to bring in Bradley Beal, whether that be a pick, which would, I believe, have to be 2022 because they've already traded their 2020 in order to get Jeremy Grant, or maybe someone like Michael Porter Jr., depending on how high they are on him. I don't really think that that would be a possibility before they even actually see him on the court, but I'm just throwing out ideas of ways that they could up the compensation and potentially get Bradley Beal. Like I said, picks, maybe some other young players that they could try and consolidate, because I think it's a good point that Joey makes that this would be a good move for the Nuggets to provide them even more star power in the exact replacement of a guy that, that they'd be giving up in Gary Harris. More offense uh, from Bradley Beal, someone that can score at the end of games when you need him, uh, in, as, as opposed to just you know relying so much on Jokic, who it's going to be a bit of a struggle at the end of games to get shot creation out of big guys, and that means you're relying on Jamal Murray to hit big shots at the end of games. Not saying that he can't, just that it would be nice to have someone like Bradley Beal that's a little bit more proven uh, in that spot. So this is a good idea. I think the Nuggets are going to be in play for Beal and maybe any other stars that come up over the next 12 months or so. I just don't know that this particular framework 100% gets them there and they need to put in either some more picks uh, or maybe a, another young player to fully entice the Wizards to make this happen. Moving on now, this is a trade that I came up with getting Bradley Beal to the Boston Celtics. And the deal is obviously Beal to the Celtics in exchange for Marcus Smart, Jalen Brown, and Romeo Langford. And my first question with my own deal here, just kind of the things that are going through my head is would it be too much for the Celtics to throw in maybe one of their own picks or even potentially the Memphis 
pick because they're already giving up Marcus Smart, who's a good player, really important for them, really good defender, but maybe not the best stats guy. Uh, Jalen Brown's a good young player, even though they ha- whoever gets him will have to pay him this upcoming offseason. And then Romeo Langford is a lottery pick as well. So would it be too much for them to throw in another pick? Because I think of, of any of the, the packages that have been shown in this video so far, this one has the most compensation going back to Washington. Like I said, they get Marcus Smart, who's on a good contract, who's a good player, who's going to be able to help them. Jalen Brown, good young player. Again, you'd have to pay him in 2020, but still a really good young player. And then Romeo Langford as well, who at this point is essentially like throwing in another lottery pick since he hasn't actually played yet. So would it be too much for the Wizards to come back and say, okay, give us your lottery protected pick next year, or maybe consider throwing us the Memphis pick, and then we'll give you guys some kind of draft compensation in return to kind of balance that out. I don't know. You guys can let me know that down in the comments section, but I feel like this is a good deal because the Celtics are still going to be in the hunt for more star power, even though they've missed out on all the star power, with the exception of Kyrie Irving over the last four years in terms of trades. They never made the boogie trade. They never made the Anthony Davis trade that people kind of expected them to over the last couple of years once they started stockpiling these assets. They're still going to be in position to make those kinds of moves, and maybe Bradley Beal is the guy that they finally bring in and make that move with. So you guys let me know if this is right on the money, if this is too much, if this is too little for the Celtics to give up in a Bradley Beal trade. Moving on now, this is another trade that I came up with, and then we're going to finish it up after this with a suggestion from you guys, and it's Bradley Beal going to the Miami Heat in exchange for Justice Winslow, the expiring contract of Myers Leonard, Bam Adebayo, and the Heat's 2026 first round pick, and this is the first issue with this deal. The Heat are actually relatively close to having the compensation necessary to make this deal work, even if they don't want to include their most recent draft pick, Tyler Hero. Winslow is a good young player on a good deal that the Wizards would definitely be interested in. Uh, Bam Adebayo is another good player, uh, a good big who has two years left on his rookie contract. Leonard gets them out from under salary, but they just don't have any picks. Like 2026, the reason that pick is in there is because that's the first time that they can actually offer a pick and not violate the Stepien rule, at least as of right now. Now, if they make the Chris Paul trade uh, and potentially get back their own pick from the Thunder, then that could potentially change and they could maybe move one of those picks uh, that they would be end up, ended up getting back for taking on Chris Paul's contract. Maybe they could move that to the Wizards, but it's just, they are right there in my opinion. And it's really frustrating that they don't have these future picks because if they had all their picks, I think they definitely would be a very, very, uh, a big presence in the Bradley Beal trade talks whenever this ends up happening. Um, so I, that's my issue. I just don't know if they can fully get there without having their own picks and without giving up Tyler Hero. Now, if they wanted to give him up, maybe they could get closer without having to give up a pick so far in the future. Depends on how you know how protected this 2026 pick is. But again, I think this is something that could at least interest the Wizards initially. They just don't really have anything else to sweeten the pot other than, you know, uh, going down the line even further in picks once they're able to do that. And then, like I said, Tyler Hero. But I do think this can work with a Beal-Butler combination in Miami. I do think those two players can coexist because they both can shoot, they both can play make. I think that's something that can work. The Heat want stars, they want to surround, or they want to get stars in Miami and have one more really good run while Pat Riley is still there. So this would be an interesting move for them to take a look at to be able to do that. And last up now, Reese has a trade sending Beal to the Portland Trailblazers. And the deal is Kent Bazemore, Zach Collins, and Anthony Simons in exchange for Bradley Beal. And this is another one kind of similar to the first two in the video where they're starting to move in the right direction, but this definitely isn't enough. And Reese recognizes that when he says the Blazers would throw in some picks in his actual tweet. And here's the thing. So the Bazemore expiring is nice. Wizards get out from under some salary. Zach Collins is a good yet unproven young player that you're going to have to pay relatively soon if you want to keep him. And then Simons had a good summer league, and there's been some crazy good rumors about how well he's been playing for the Blazers in terms of, uh, you know, privately and in workouts and stuff. They have really high hopes for him, but this is not enough for Bradley Beal. Like, you have to have more proven players. You have to have something that's actually going to really get the Wizards excited about making this deal, which is why they'd have to include, in my opinion, two future first round picks depending on protections and maybe even three if you're Portland and I don't know how realistic that is for them to be that excited about getting Bradley Beal and having to give up two or three future first round picks when they already have Damian Lillard and CJ McCollum now if you wanted to put McCollum into this deal you could maybe you know work something around uh, where that would make sense but uh, in terms of for the Wizards, that would at least be enough compensation for them. I'm not sure that the Blazers would do that. Um, and that, you know, that three-headed monster in the backcourt of Dame and CJ uh, and then now Bradley Beal, 
that would be interesting. I'm just not sure how excited the Blazers would be about doubling down on this idea of having really, really good backcourt players by giving away future first round picks. And again, a player in Simons that they are apparently really high on. And I think I might do a video on here pretty soon. So again, Reese, this is an interesting uh, trade. Like you, I like the fact that you recognized that the Blazers would need to throw in picks. This isn't enough by itself. And then if you started throwing around two or three future first round picks, the Blazers might not be interested anymore. But again, interesting. And there you have it. That is going to be the end of today's NBA Trade Machine episode, and I thank you all very much for watching. Once again, my name is Tucker. If you missed any of my previous videos, then be sure to check out the boxes on screen. Thanks again, and I'll see you all next time.